Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for Discourse. Are we playing Mario Kart right now? Because I feel like I'm about to get first on Discourse. Okay, listen, this past week, in the world of music, two different artists from two different sects of the indie world were having respective PR moments. And even though they were very different in terms of their reception and overall topic, I think they're very much connected. And I would like to link them together here and create between them a super discourse Frankenstein monster. Starting first with the new up and coming beloved indie rock and pop outfit, The Last Dinner Party. Now, in a bit of inaccurate attribution recently, there was a piece uh, covering the group talking about their recent popularity. And this piece caused a lot of people to get angry because uh, the quote in question in it, uh, out of the context in which it was originally said, it made the band seem uh, very out of touch, very ignorant toward the economic plights of average everyday working people, those who are struggling to make ends meet on a regular basis. Here's the quote in question, and while, in my opinion, uh, doesn't really look that much different in the original piece it was lifted from, <laughs> it was not quite the snooty looking down at the pores type moment that it was uh, read to be in this newer article, this newer piece. So no hate to the band, no shade toward them. I still love their new LP. But this situation caused a conversation among many on Twitter talking about how groups such as The Last Dinner Party and many Many others in the music world and the indie scene broadly come from a place of just staggering economic privilege. I even got an email from a fan before all of this uh, asking me what I thought of the last dinner party and groups like them using their high levels of uh, status and economic privilege to kind of leverage their success in the music industry. Because there are a lot of artists out there, even some who uh, have built very passionate followings on the underground circuit who come from households where one or both of the parents make a seven-figure salary, uh, have net worths in the millions and billions. And there are people who have been very outspoken on Twitter, specifically in reaction to this last dinner party stuff, saying things like, these girls shouldn't even have a music career, they shouldn't even try because their success and their spot in the industry right now is preventing a more deserving horror group of musicians from ascending and becoming popular themselves. If we get rid of the last dinner party, who's going to replace them? It's not like there are seven other groups of a lower economic status that are making the same kind of music. In fact, I think their background kind of influences their music in a way you can't really be surprised that uh, a bunch of energetic in your face girls uh, who like to dress like old world aristocrats might come from money. <laughs> And that's kind of the other reason that I feel like uh, this whole we don't like rich people being successful in music uh, genie is not kind of going back in the bottle. Not only has this been a thing for years, but we're long past the point where artists even feel the need to hide this anymore. Like literally what the fuck is Vampire Weekend? The only aesthetic they brought to the table is, hey, we're a bunch of uh, richy rich Ivy League school kids making cutesy, silly, kind of lo fi indie pop and rock tunes, occasionally with a West African twist, which was also weird. Yeah, that was very much thrown in our faces pretty unabashedly, and audiences ate it the fuck up. For over a decade now, you could officially use your upper crust economic status to make your band look cool. The levees have broken on this dam. Not only that, but especially now, today in the age of streaming, uh, success in the music industry is no longer a zero-sum game. Like, not only do you have more contracts going out to artists over uh, mid-tier viral fame than ever these days, but there are tons of artists out there every day who are releasing beloved albums, who are gaining large followings, who come from pretty low or average economic means. Not to imply that it's only good music that gets popular, or gains attention, or success in the internet age. On top of this, I know the attention economy isn't like infinite
in it in terms of its size and space. And I feel like the solution to this problem of only so many eyes and ears to go around is that artists should be getting paid more for the attention that they do get. Imagine a music industry where 100,000 monthly listeners on Spotify affords you a full-time living. You and a whole band. And honestly, I can't really blame a lot of these rich kids for wanting to use their privilege and the comforts they've been afforded in life to make art. I mean, making art is fun. It's most likely what a lot of you would be doing if you had nothing else to do. And considering the very high economic status of a lot of these individuals in the music industry, uh, making music that entertains people is probably the least destructive thing they could be doing. I would rather many of them be doing that than, I don't know, uh, working under their dad as an oil tycoon or taking the reins of their family's trust fund, I guess. In terms of global economic social damage, Image these people could be unleashing onto the globe. Uh, making music is maybe like the, the best thing they could be doing with their time. And look, as somebody who's been around for a minute and has uh, seen a lot of artists with these kinds of backgrounds uh, attempt to build music careers out of them, for every one Vampire Weekend you see, there's like dozens of other artists out there that come from a similar place and are really just going nowhere. And if one of these fuckers does manage to come out with a great record, good. Amazing. Fantastic. I would rather they have spent their time focusing and accomplishing that as opposed to, I don't know, inventing a new kind of mortgage that uh, kicks people out of their homes or becoming the next Elon Musk. There's an alternate universe where he actually pursued a shitty SoundCloud DJ career, and I wish we were there. After having said all of that, though, I get your concern. I myself don't come from, you know, much economically speaking, and I'll be straight. I've had advantages in life. I have great teeth. I was raised in an Italian American family. My parents liked me. And yeah, sometimes it does boil my blood to think of people having all of that. And on top of it, really no economic worries in the world and getting to do everything and anything they ever wanted as a result of that. But the reason I can't stay mad at those particular individuals who, again, use that privilege to uh, forge a successful music career because they can afford to like really get in the trenches and take multiple hits on albums that don't go anywhere or use their influence to cozy up to people who know people who know people who know people who will get their feet in the door on certain situations. Really, at the end of the day, those people are a symptom of a much greater issue. They're not the problem. The problem being, even if you got rid of the last dinner party, even if you got rid of every trust fund baby in the music industry today, people of average or poorer economic backgrounds can't afford to be struggling artists in an age where your music literally makes no money. Enter stage right, the second part of this discourse, a tirade that one James Blake went on over Twitter. We will put a lot of these tweets on the screen right now, but to sum them up efficiently, James pretty much went at all of these platforms that uh, music fans access their favorite music through and talked about streaming platforms, essentially putting little to no money in artists' pockets. And then on top of that, platforms like TikTok breaking down the uh, level of attention paid to music broadly because now everything is getting shortened and kind of fit into bite-sized chunks and we're not actually appreciating song craft and uh, lengthier pieces and uh, dense lush uh, amazing production now this is the current state of the music industry it is very real and this and the topic i was just discussing in the video are very much connected we can't sit here and be surprised at the the number of people who are rich and privileged succeeding in the music industry today, where your average person, even if they are talented, even if they do have good song ideas, even if they have the potential to be the greatest musical artist the world has ever known, they can't afford to fund an entire 20, 30 state tour that makes no money and that they lose money on. They can't afford to spend all of their free time just hawking and promoting and pushing and linking over and over 
and over all the stuff they've made on social media. There's a squeeze for money. There's a squeeze for time that artists at every level of the industry are feeling, even somebody as successful as James here. If a guy like James is feeling the pinch, who's been in the music industry for as long as he has, and also, you know, has a dad who was a songwriter and a producer too, that's got to help. If this guy feels like he's being slighted by this system, imagine how it feels for anybody starting out with zero anything. So I guess let me say what I think we can do from here. One, don't be outwardly angry or hateful toward artists who, uh, you know, maybe come from a place of privilege just simply based on that background. Again, they're not the problem. They're a symptom. There would be more artists of average means either succeeding before them or succeeding around them if they just had the capacity to do so in a music industry that paid and supported them fairly. Also, let me just say how weirdly parasocial it is to presume any number of things about an artist just based on who their parents are and how much money they make. Because even with those factors, so many different family dynamics could be at play. Next, stop acting like music is free and that artists are just really lucky to be able to make music for a living that they're barely actually making. Artists are making music because they're passionate to do so, because they're great at it and they're hoping to do it for a job. They're not doing it just as like a favor to you. So when you can, please directly support them and their efforts by uh, buying their merch, buying their records, or going and supporting them on a tour or something. And lastly, but most importantly, please Please get rid of these nasty and toxic perceptions that artists don't deserve more money and support from the industry they're operating within. Stop responding to them with jealousy and hate whenever they are calling out things like how crappy the pay is from streaming services, because it's that very crappy pay that's preventing uh, people who are smaller than them, economically and status-wise too, from starting out and succeeding from nothing. When you see artists calling out these streaming platforms or uh, doing something like getting behind unionization efforts, for example, support that, get behind that and get loud about it. If the biggest artists in the industry today got together and, you know, did a boycott of music releases from their labels or prevented their stuff from going on streaming platforms, a lot of what's happening today could be completely flipped on its head. I mean, look at the recent accomplishments that were made by the uh, Screen Actors Guild and the Writers Guild. While obviously the agreements they ultimately came to were not perfect, and there's still a lot of room for improvement. Uh, those groups of workers have way more leverage in their industry than musicians broadly do right now, where even the biggest artists are routinely at the mercy of their labels and streaming platforms. As it just so happens, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib just introduced legislation that would pay musicians more through the streaming services, which is obviously not a silver bullet solution to this problem, but a vast improvement over the current state of things. And given that a lot of you guys are music fans who want musicians to do better, if not musicians yourselves, you might actually want to get behind this legislation passing and Call your senators, call your Congress people, because Lord knows that if you stay silent and do nothing, uh, the labels are going to lobby against this thing and it'll be totally buried in the dirt. Make some noise, push for something that could uh, improve things. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about all of this. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or a link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, music forever.